Hello friends, welcome back to another episode here on the channel. I hope you're all doing great and for anyone new to the channel, my name is Lee, also known as Osiris. In today's episode, we are continuing on with our VGC Series 11 content and we have another rental team for you all today. And this one's a real great one. This is from player Hyro. Uh, he is a Dutch VGC player. Actually, it was a tweet that I spotted from him uh, last week where he said that he'd been able to manage to get into Master Ball tier with this special Rayquaza team. And Rayquaza, one of the restrictions Pokemon that's not used very often so it definitely caught my eye looked at the team and it looks amazing to play around with it's got some really nice features to it and uh, some nice options that are going to really benefit from the Rayquaza and its airlock so I thought it would be a really good team to feature on the channel today so massive shout out to Hyro uh, their socials are all linked down in the description if you like to drop them a follow and uh, hopefully if you do try this rental team out I hope you have a lot of fun with it. Well, as always, we'll have a couple of games with the team and then we'll wrap up with the rental at the end. But just to kind of give a brief overview, we've got the Grimstone with the light clear, the screen support, which is going to be so imperative in this format, really, with Dynamax coming back. Got foul play, though. It's kind of stab option, which is nice. It gives you a nice option against things like Shadow Rider Calyrex um, and Ice Rider Calyrex that we're seeing pick up uh, quite a bit in usage you got the the amoongus there which gives that redirection i think a check for trick room as well to a certain extent and the cobra berry to kind of get rid of that big flying weakness that we see from the the resurgence of max airstream coming back then we've got the start of the show the requires it's got the life orb to boost the attack damage there got protect hurricane draco meteor and earth power really great options for its max when it does max and um, you're going to have the airstream there you're going to have uh max worm wind to reduce attack power on the opposing side of the field and then obviously the special defense boosts through uh, max quake and then you've got anti another nice option in series 11 had a really great time in series 10 and that's kind of transitioning over got options like sacred fire which can burn extreme speed bulldoze and snarl and we'll get onto the bulldoze in a moment got the assault vest there and then rotom wash a pokemon that we haven't seen for such a long time and i'm so happy to see it in this team pairs up really nicely with something like rayquaza as well can really disrupt with that airlock on teams trying to utilize the weather just gets rid of that and Rotom can't either take advantage of rain if it wants to or requires it can get rid of the things like the sun if that is a problem for it got a nasty plot there you've got a really nice option to kind of support it through Grimmsnarl screen support and then the redirection with the Amoongus to help get that nasty plot up and then max Rotom and we know how good Rotom can be behind screens and with their redirection support anyway and then something from older formats is Metagross now I can't remember who mentioned in the comments last week on the the videos but someone did say why Metagross why is it not being played so much in series 11 now Dynamax is back not seeing much of it well here it is and I think it's a really good question because Metagross is still really strong in the format it's gonna have issues against things like Shadow Rider Calyrex that um do cause a lot of issues with that Astro Barrage and obviously when it maxes you need to be very careful around it but with screen support and the right options around it I think Metagross can still be a really nice option that comes back to uh, linking in the end time with that Bulldoze as well that can proc the weakness policy and get Metagross set up pretty early on in the match ignore the speed drops through the Bulldoze with its clear body ability and then uh, get that Meta get the weakness policy boost and just start thrown out really big um max moves onto opposing targets so that is the team i'm very excited about playing it today big shout out again to hyro for the rental and for sharing it with the community and i hope if you do try it out friends you enjoy it so without further ado let's jump into game one of today's episode okay first up we have a shadow rider calyrex a indeedy a domanitanglarian form a cinderace a sableye and a lanara so what are we looking at here shadow rider calyrex team obviously got that standard support with the indeedy the terrain there the redirection and then a lot of other things that you don't generally see with it including that glarian domanitan which is more than likely i would say scarfed in this team may not be though maybe banded because you've potentially got quash support there from the save line but that does then conflict with the psychic terrain from the indedian uh, opponents got to be careful with how they utilize in the save line in this matchup whether or not they uh, pair it alongside the Calyrex or if they uh, go with the Ndidi support. One thing that we have to be aware of is that we need Grimmsnarl in this match because we need that screen support but we don't want to kind of just allow it to get taken down or take too many heavy hits early on from things like Glaring, Domanitan and Cinderous which can hit it for pretty good damage to be honest. Really useful. I think Entai is a nice lead here as well. It threatens a lot of things on the opposing side of the field. I think we need Rayquaza in this one. It's going to be useful and then maybe 
Rotom or Metagross. Metagross, I'm not really keen on bringing. Like, Rotom, I think, could do a job here, but we're going to need to really prioritize getting rid of the Calyrex early on because once that falls away, the rest of the team's kind of not too hard to deal with. We've got good synergy to switch around. It's the Astral Barrage um, threat that we have to really worry about. And uh, Grimmsnarl, going to find it difficult to be able to hit it with uh, the redirection support. So it's going to be about trying to get rid of in GD early on or take advantage at least of the snarl support that we got from uh entai to help us uh, to, to deal with it you know um okay so domanitan galerian domanitan coming out alongside the calyrex here so we've got a couple of options here we could go for a snarl uh or we could go like so we could go reflect to give us a bit of a buffer against the domanitan here so entai has a bit of an easier time and then go for a snarl we could go for a light screen and then go for a sacred fire into uh i think we probably got light screen is it on my time gonna pick up the knockout though potentially the other option is we just go straight for foul play into the calyrex here um and uh, we don't really have the switches to be honest and just like play it straight just go for a sacred fire because we've got the assault vest on the the anti here and like i said at the very start if we can just get rid of the calyrex early on this game gets a lot easier um you know straight away so we are seeing a big u-turn from that Dalmanitan here turn one um not ideal not ideal and if they've got draining kiss on the calyrex that's gonna make things very difficult for us for sure because uh, we're not going to have that screen support we're going to lose grimstone we're not going to get this foul playoff into the calyrex uh, so we'll see the calyrex hasn't protected though so that's kind of interesting um it hasn't moved yet so darmanitan definitely was scarf but we should take this with grimstone we take that pretty easily with um entire as well so yeah we're going to get the sacred fire off into the indeedy um and the foul play is going to be more than enough unless it's sashed into the calyrex to pick up that knockout but it is sashed so that's kind of interesting okay so we've got the option now where we just light screen snarl this next turn uh, at least we get some screen support up with before we lose grim snarl and then the snarl here going to be quite useful just to pick up the calyrex here and just chip down that ndd a little bit further in this first one so um it gets around the redirection as well which is the nice thing about entai especially with the um the assault vest and then that further kind of uh, protection with the light screen support as well makes it a little bit easier to kind of manage things like calyrex that can be a little bit more problematic especially when they're supported by things like help and hand indeed which um in this case I would have thought that the helping hand would have been a bit more uh, beneficial uh, knowing that Entai normally carry things like Snarl and uh, the Calyrex kind of going down here without really having much too much impact in the game and the, the fact that the Grim Snarl on our side is still active it allows us to get that that reflect up now where we can potentially uh, either get I think really got to think about this as well. If the, the Darmanitan comes in, I think what we would probably be better doing is getting a Bulldoze off, even though it's going to damage our own Grimmsnarl. Um, get a Reflect and a Bulldoze up, and that slows down the Darmanitan, kind of takes away that, that uh, Scarf that it's got access to. So it makes it a bit easier to manage if we can get the... Um, Get the boulders off because we are pretty low health at the minute so it depends what the uh, the domanitan decides to lock in with uh, they tend to have things like rock slide as well which could be a little bit uh, awkward for us to deal with for sure because i think rock slide are probably even behind a reflect take down the entai um but if they go for that it, it does mean that um <clears throat> rotom can come in and uh, if they're locked in the rock slide we're not really too worried about that uh, and Rotom doesn't really mind glaring on Manitan too much anyway, but uh, my opponent still got access to their Dynamax, as have we, so something that we need to kind of consider. As we see a Brick Break come out, that's a nice option, there we go, getting rid of that Reflect there, um, and the Light Screen, so that's a really nice option, but they are locked into Brick Break now, um, so we're pretty free to bring in Rayquaza uh, and just kind of lay some hurt down and uh, we can go for a max airstream so it kind of gives us a little bit of a, a buffer later on the only thing that you'd have to worry about 
is then Max and the Dom Manitan here and then going after chasing down that Rayquaza. But if they do that, I think what we'll do is we'll go for a foul play, we'll switch out because that is a definite possibility. I think they're going to pull the Dynamax trigger here. None that they're locked into Brick Break, right? And they're going to have that free free attack into to Rayquaza. Um, and we're not going to be able to pick up a knockout onto it straight away. So I think it would make sense from... Oh, we're not going to see that. That's interesting. Just going to go with that Brick Break again. It must be into the Grimmsnarl this time around. Is enough. Ooh. I wanted to pull the trigger on that Dynamax just yet. Okay. Well. I think we'll... Pro oh, do we protect? Do we protect and get the nasty plot up? Throughout them already, we just attack. And hope that they're not... They're not... <clears throat> they're not considering this as, a, um, as an option. Okay. Well... <clears throat> I think we'll just go for a we'll go for an earth power into DD and then we'll just nasty plot. I feel like Rotom can probably win us the game from this point if we get rid of the the DD. Um and if they don't max the Manitan here. Well, if they do, <clears throat> they do. And now they're withdrawing it. That's interesting. And Lander is coming in. Okay, well I mean that's not too bad at all. Yeah, we can win this game with Rotom now. I don't think they've got a way to beat the Rotom. And this is the thing about Rotom, you know. It's such a good Pokemon in a format where there's, you know, there is obviously uh, G-Max Venusaur, which is a problem. But, oof, 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 it hangs on. That might not be actually as bad uh, a problem for us. Originally, because we could go for the Airstream with, with Rayquaza. Or we could just... Mm. Yeah, we could go Airstream. It's going to go into the Indeedee, but it gives us a speed boost. Yeah, let's go after Landorus with Airstream and then double up into it with a Hydro Pump. I think it's better at this point to, to max require. So when we've got the room to, like that Indeedee hanging on has actually done us uh, a favour here where... If it went down the Glarian, uh, Dormanitan comes in, it com kind of complicates things a little bit for us because, um, well, it makes it a bit more straightforward as well. But obviously, without our speed boost on the Rayquaza, there's no way we get the jump on it uh, with the Scarf. But um, it's more likely that the Landorus is always going to be the thing that maxes anyway. But um, if we can go first, which we should do with, with Rayquaza get the speed boost and then max airstream plus the um the hydro pump will be enough to get the landris the only issue is we're going to see follow me here so it's just whether or not um a hydro pump plus two will be enough to get the landris which i doubt it will to be honest so it's still not over but we will carry on just click buttons to see if we can uh, get through this one the redirection, like I said, the indeed hanging on does us a favor in one respect, but in another way that the, the the redirection is is very frustrating to deal with in another regard as well, you know. Uh, just because we're not, oh, they're going to rock fall before us, so requires are not max speed in this team, which is interesting, and uh, we're not taking that super well. So, I mean, the fact that Rotom was neglected here is better. Uh, and the fact that they are life orb as well means they haven't got a salt vest. So this hydro pump should hit pretty hard. And with the speed boost now, we're in a good position the next turn. To pretend, it depends what nature the Dormanitan is as well on my opponent's team. You'd imagine it's adamant. Hydro pump. Oh, it is enough. It is enough. There we go. Rotom coming back with that revenge. Uh, I didn't know if it would be enough, to be honest, but more than enough to take it down. And uh, we don't really have too much to worry about against the Dalmanitan here. We can protect Rayquaza if we want, and just Thunderbolt. And that should be enough to get the Dalmanitan. Because I think they are... Well, they have to go after the Rayquaza. And there's, there's every chance that we could still outspeed them, but I kind of would rather not risk it this turn and uh, just get some damage off onto it with Rotom. But like I say, I don't think they've really got a way to uh, to, to deal with Rotom very effectively now. Um, not After the Calyrex goes down, they kind of lose all 
the, the real kind of effectiveness to uh, to deal with um, Rotom because it's just that good a Pokemon, that good a Pokemon, and uh, Thunderbolt, yeah, going to be enough to get the Dormanitan, and that is win number one for today. So we're off to a good start, um, and i got to say, I have had a few games with this team off camera before uh, I have done recording, and I love this team. I think it's such a good team. Um, I really am enjoying it, and uh, massive shout out to Yari on, uh, on on sharing this as well. So very good game to our first opponent. We'll move into game two. Okay, up next we have a Grimmsnarl, Oranguru, Torkoal, Gastrodon, Venusaur, and Whimsicott team. So pretty heavy Trick Room looking team, but you do have that kind of fast mode in the team as well that you got to be a little bit scared of with the Torkoal and Venusaur in particular. Uh, the Whimsicott can support the trick room in a certain extent uh it can also um set up tailwind as well for things as well and it's a kind of weird concept looking team but the one thing i would say is that rayquaza probably has quite a good time here the only thing that it would really worry about with rayquaza would be maybe the whimsicott um and the grim snarl with those fairy type stabs uh but with screen support we can kind of get around those it's not terribly bad the other thing to be a little bit careful around is obviously um, the trick that could come out from the Grimmsnarl or the Switcheroo from the uh, Whimsicott. And it, I don't know, this team feels like it's got those kind of uh, things coming out from it. The other option is go Metagross Entai, which I kind of feel like might not be a bad idea to do. And have like Rayquaza Grimmsnarl in the back. Uh, yeah, yeah, I think that's probably better. Uh, Amoongus could be good here as well, but I think the Torkoal scares me off a little bit from bringing the Amoongus, so I'll we'll lock in with these. We'll see. I just feel like we want a way to try and remove the Oranguru turn one, if possible. And I think Entai Bulldoze with Max Metagross allows us to get as much damage as possible onto the Oranguru if it does come out. Yeah, so... That's, that's ideal. But like I say, we've got to worry, got to worry a lot about the, 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 the switcheroo from that Whimsicott, which you can guarantee now is going to come out. Guarantee it's going to switcheroo. So I think what we'll do is, just to be safe, because I don't want to lose my weakness policy on my Metagross, I'm going to switch into Grimmsnarl, which is immune to the prankster kind of switcheroo shenanigans. Um, it's not going to Moonblast into our Metagross slot. It's going to switch a room, I'm pretty sure. So we'll just try and get some damage off into the Oranguru now with the Secret Fire. If we can pick up a burn, that's pretty nice as well for us. Um, but yeah, we want to preserve that weakness policy. I've been caught out with the switcheroo and trick too many times now to be like, yeah, we're going to we're gonna get caught with it. Although it does just protect, which is kind of interesting. So we've been baited completely as they're going to... Uh, they're going to set the Trick Room up with the Oranguru. There's not really much we can do. We do get the burn, which is really nice. And there's the Trick Room set up. So, I mean, what we can do is get our screen set up now, which is which is always going to be helpful. And another Sacred Fire is going to be enough to get rid of the Oranguru this next turn, which is uh, which is exactly what we want. Um, yeah, and we'll just, we'll just light screen. And then we can reflect the next turn if we need to. We could have sacred fired the Whimsicott here, but I'm not really too concerned about the Whimmy. I mean, Memento, Memento, nice tech. Okay, there we go. It is going to faint, so it's going to go down. I do like the Memento on it. Reduces our attack and special attack two stages, though. So, um, and Yawn coming out from Orangari. Wow. Pulling out all the stops. Sacred Fire minus two, not going to be doing that much damage, not picking the knockup out. Uh, but that Oranguru is getting closer to, to going down. Grimmsnarl now subjected to that Yawn, so we need to readjust this next turn, which makes us a little bit more vulnerable uh, from our opponent, especially if we can see something like Torkoal coming in and then the, inst the double instruct. But uh, the one thing we could potentially do is just go for an extreme speed into Oranguru. Because... It should still pick up the knockout and then switch into a Rayquaza here. Um, and then we avoid Grimstar going to sleep. And we get rid of the sun as well with Rayquaza. So 
the eruption shouldn't do as much damage. Hopefully. Extreme speed. Oh, just picking up the knockout onto uh, Oranguru. So that's good. And there's the eruption there, which we should be able to take pretty comfortably without the sun up as well. Yeah, Rayquaza are taking that pretty well. Um, we still have the Trick Room to kind of um, deal with, but at the same time, we're not in too bad a position. My opponent down to uh, Gastrodon comes in. He's going to threaten both our Pokemon, really, with their uh, Scald or Ice Beam, respectively, on that Gastrodon. Um... I think what we could potentially do is just slow the game down a bit at this point. Uh, keep Rayquaza in the back. Go for Snarl. We get the Sun back up by taking the airlock out of play. Because the Sun hasn't disappeared. So this is how our airlock works. It just negates the effects of the Sun. So the Sun's still in effect. Um, it's not overwritten like it would be if the, if the rain or the sand or the hail came in. It's still in effect. It's just as long as airlock's out in the field, it has no additional effects on anything. So the sun coming back out, it will boost Torkoal's damage output here, but at the same time, it reduces the um, the attack power of something like Scald or Max Geyser that's probably coming out from this uh, Gastron. It could be Max Hailstorm, even. Let's see. Max Quake is more likely, I would imagine. But are we going to be able to take this? The entire Soul Fest, the light screen up. I would say so. I would say so. Earth Power, the doubling into Entai, I think. Ooh. Yeah, well, we take that pretty well. Oh, Max Hailstorm chasing down that Rayquaza. Okay, not so wise. Get that snarl off. And then we're sitting in a much better position. And the sun does disappear. Yeah, so that's that's what we want. The max quakes are what's really a little bit annoying to deal with. But the special attack drops are always useful. Now we've got to be careful about what we switch in where now. Um, might be worth just keeping F what we got on the field out now while we just kind of stall out these last trick room turns. We've got one more turn here, so there's not really much point of getting anything in now. Reflect isn't really needed. Um, I think we just foul play into the Gastrodon just to get damage off into it, to be honest, because um, at this point, the Torkoal's not really too much of an issue, especially something that requires I can deal with it pretty, pretty easily. Um, I mean, the option there could have been like Rayquaza for the Entai. Could have been a really nice switch in there. Um, Max Ooze. Going to be into the uh, the Grim Snarl. Uh, but we'll be able to negate that special attack boost with another Snarl and then a foul play as the trick room ends. And we'll be able to get another Snarl on their final turn of Max, which just sets up like Rayquaza and Metagross to kind of come in and close this one up first. So that is not too bad at all. Although the foul play is not really doing too much to that Gastrodon. Looks so sad there. Big, big Dynamax Gastrodon looking so... So sad. So sad. <laughs> um, I wonder what their last... Is their last poke? No, they've got Whimsic they had Whimsicott, didn't they? They didn't bring it restricted to this one, which is kind of interesting. Did they have a restricted? Let me just check this. Did we not notice they had it? No restricted. Okay. I didn't even notice in Team Preview. I've just noticed now. Literally just noticed now. My god, what is wrong? What is wrong? They may max ooze again, but the battle is cancelled. And that is two games with Rayquaza. We didn't really get to see the Rayquaza in this last one, but we got two wins, so that's all that matters. And we got to see the team kind of function well, which is always enjoyable. Um, so I hope you have enjoyed this episode. Good game to our opponent. Fair play for not bringing a restricted to uh, a restricted ladder. Um, it's brave. But... We will hop over now and remind you all of today's rental code, friends. Okay, friends, here is today's rental code. Big shout out to Yarrow once again for providing us with the team for today's episode. And I hope if you do try it out, you uh, have a lot of fun with it. And uh, definitely check out their socials, which are linked down in the description below. And uh, the Rayquaza, it's probably one of my most fun Series 11 teams that we've played so far. I know only two weeks into it, but I'm including that in Series 8 as well. I really love this team a lot. Um, and I do feel like I'm going to probably play it a lot more on the ladder going forward. 
because it is just that much fun and it's got some really nice kind of build text to it so if you do have it uh, a go with it I, I like i say it, you're gonna have a really good time with it the rotom is a really nice option as well it kind of gives you a lot of flexibility in the team that uh, i think is missing from some series 11 teams so have fun with it there is the rental we'll wrap up there friends have a great rest of your day whatever you're up to and i will see you all for another episode very soon on the channel so until then friends take care of yourselves and bye bye